All right, what's going on everybody? Evan here from devasun.com. And in this video, we're gonna be covering using nextauth.js with Amazon Cognito. So this is gonna allow our users to log in and out of Amazon Cognito and even sign up if they want to. And it's all done through this nextauth.js library, which is an authentication library for Next.js. So we're gonna be using Next.js as well. And this library makes it really easy to sign Set up authentication as opposed to having to do all of that authentication yourself. So let's not waste any time and get right into it. So the first thing we're going to need to do is create our Next.js project. So to do that, we're going to say npx create next app, and then we're going to want to name this project. So I'm just going to call this next auth tutorial and we'll wait for this to finish installing. And now once you have that installed, let's go ahead and CD into that project. Now here, we're going to want to install the next auth library. So to do that, you can either go to nextauthjs.org or we can hit this and it takes us to the NPM page where we can just hit this button here. It'll copy this text and we can go ahead and install next auth like so. Now that we have next auth installed, we can actually go ahead and open up our project in our editor. Right, and here we can see we get the basic Next.js template, but we're going to remove a lot of things here because we're just going to make a very simple application. So I'm going to go ahead and remove everything in the index.js return and then just do two React fragment tags here. And we're going to go ahead and remove these two imports up at the top. So we have a nice clean file to work with. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our underscore app.js file and we're going to go ahead and import our provider from our Next auth client library and we're going to surround this main component here with that provider so to do that we're just going to add some parentheses here so i'll say provider and then we're going to say session equals and here we're going to say page props dot session we're going to close out that tag take the closing tag and surround this component here so that it looks like so and basically what this provider does it provides us with the session knowing whether or not the user is signed in or out we can know that because we are wrapping our entire project with our provider so anywhere in our project we will know if there is a current session of a user being logged in or not and that's actually all we need to do on this page now we need to go back to our index.js and here we need to import a couple things so we're going to do import use session sign in sign out and we're importing that from our next auth client library like so and then we're going to do const session and loading we're going to use session and now here instead of just returning this we're going to actually say if session so if there is a current user logged in we're going to return signed in as and we're going to say session dot user dot email because every user that we have is going to have an email in this case add a little break tag here button and this button's going to have an on click events and in that on click event we're going to have an arrow function that's going to run sign out and we can go ahead and label this button as sign out now what this is going to do this function here is actually built right into our next auth client library and it's automatically going to sign that user out out when we click on this so we don't have to handle any of that it is all handled by next auth which is pretty nice all right now we need to handle if the session does not exist meaning that the user is not logged in so all we have to do is just return the empty fragments here we're going to say not signed in break tag and then we're going to add a button to allow the user to sign in so we're going to say button on click and we're going to have an error function and like you might expect it's going to call instead of the sign out function it's going to call the sign in function so we're going to say sign in and we're going to label the button sign in now we also have this loading variable here so we could say if loading we could just return null so that way while we're waiting for the user to actually be signed in we can make sure that the page does not load before them this is optional but if you want it it is there the next thing we're going to do is actually create some environment
component variables. And to do that, Next.js actually has a built-in handler for it. So all we have to do is just create a .env.local file. And in this file is where we're gonna actually put our Cognito client ID, the client secret, and the Cognito domain. However, to access those variables, we need to actually create that Cognito user pool. So go ahead and go to your AWS account and go to your user pools. You can just search for Cognito in the top here and it'll take you to here, in which case you can manage user pools and you can go to create a user pool up at the top right. Now we need a name for a pool. So I'm just gonna say next auth tutorial for the user pool. And we're not gonna step through all the settings. We're just gonna review the defaults here. And really the only thing we need to do is go to our app clients and click add app client. So click add an app client. And then we're gonna call this app client next auth tutorial website because that is what our application is. We're gonna to wanna to leave all of this alone. We're gonna make sure that generate client secret is checked, make sure that is checked and everything should be good to go here. So let's go ahead and click create app client. Then we're gonna go ahead and go to return to pool details and we're gonna click create pool. Now we can see that your user pool was successfully created. Let's go ahead and go to our domain name under app integration at the left here. And we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and create a domain name for this application. So let's go ahead and call this next auth tutorial. Check if it's available, it is available. So let's go ahead and click save changes. All right now we're gonna to wanna to go to app clients over at the left here and we see our app client ID. Let's go ahead and copy this because we're gonna to need to create a local environment variable for it. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna call this local environment variable cognito underscore client underscore ID. And we're gonna set it equal to that ID that we just copied right here. Next, we're gonna need our cognito client secret. So I'm gonna say cognito client secret and we're gonna set that equal to the client secret, which we can access by clicking show details. And we see it right here. So let's go ahead and copy that. And we're gonna paste it like so. And then the last thing we're gonna need is our Cognito domain. So we're gonna say Cognito domain. We're gonna set that equal to the domain that we had set. So to access that, let's go back to our domain name. And remember, we named it next auth tutorial. So we're gonna say next auth tutorial. And then we need to get that end of our domain here. So we're gonna copy that, paste it. So now we have our domain in our Cognito domain here. And now we actually need to use these environment variables here. So where we use these is in our API folder and we have a hello.js file in here by default. We can go ahead and actually delete that cause we're not gonna be using it. And we're gonna create a new folder and this folder is gonna be called auth. And inside that folder, we're gonna create a file and that file is gonna be a square brace, three periods, next auth, and then a closing square brace bracket.js and it's very important that you name it just like that and then we're going to need to import next auth from next auth and we're also going to need to import providers from next auth slash providers. And here we're gonna need to export default next auth. And within here, we're gonna say providers, square brackets, and we're gonna need to enter the Cognito provider. So we're gonna say providers.cognito, and we're gonna pass in an object. And this is where we use our environment variables. So for our client ID, we're gonna say process.env.cognito client ID. Now we need our client secret. So process.env.cognito client secret. And then we need our domain. So we say process.env.cognito domain. And there's one last thing we need to do in our Cognito user pool before we actually continue. And we need to go to our app client settings here. And here we need to enable our authentication so next auth can actually authenticate our users. So right here, we're gonna go ahead and click select all so the Cognito user pool is selected. And here we're gonna need to enter a callback URL. So that callback URL is gonna be HTTP colon slash localhost 3000 slash API slash auth callback cognito. And it's gonna give us a little bit of warning saying that you should only use localhost for development, but we are using it for development, so that is fine. But for like a real application, you will actually want to put your actual domain name if you have one instead of localhost, but we're just testing, so this is fine. And the last thing we wanna to go to this OAuth2 section because 
next auth uses OAuth2. We're gonna need to make sure we authorize code grant and we need the scope to be email, open ID, and profile. And now that we have all of that selected, let's go ahead and click save changes. And now if we go ahead and run our Next.js application, so again, go to your terminal and to run a Next.js application, all we have to do is type npm run dev. And we can see that it started on localhost 3000 and we can currently see it not signed in in a sign in button. So that means we are not currently signed in. So let's go ahead and actually try to sign into Amazon Cognito. And now when we click, we can see a sign in with Cognito button. So let's go ahead and click that. And now we have this sign in form here. Now we don't actually have an account created yet for our user pool. So let's go ahead and click sign up. So we're just going to call this user testing user. And then the email, we can just say testing user at gmail.com. And the password can be anything as long as it meets these requirements right here. And we're going to go ahead and click sign up. And now it says we have sent a code to the email that we provided. Please enter the verification code. Now we actually didn't use a real email for that. So we're going to need to manually confirm confirm that user ourself. So let's go ahead and look at our users and groups at the left here. And we can currently see the account status is unconfirmed. Let's click on that user and click confirm user. And now the user should be confirmed. So let's go back to our localhost 3000. We're currently still not signed in. Let's go ahead and sign in, click sign in with Cognito. And here we're going to say testing user, which is the name of the user that we created. And we're going to enter the password and we're going to go ahead and click sign in. When we go back to our website, we can see signed in as testing testing user at gmail.com and a sign out button. And if we refresh the page again, we're going to still see this because that information is stored in a session. So until we remove those cookies, our website will know and remember us. Now, if we go ahead and click sign out, you're going to see that once again, we are now seeing the not signed in page, meaning that we have successfully signed out of that session. And that's pretty much going to cover this tutorial of next auth with Amazon Cognito. I may do more videos on this in the future. For example, if we want a custom login or sign up page we could do that as well but for now i think that's going to cover it thank you guys for watching this video if you found it helpful please leave a like and subscribe but until then i'll see you in the next video